My name is John Yost, and I'm a filmmaker and a commercial producer. Most of the time I'm working on um, educational stuff, uh, commercial stuff, and then the other half of the time I'm working in producing features, shorts, documentaries, things like that. I got involved with filmmaking, I went to school for it. Um, I didn't particularly do a lot of it in high school, but I always kind of wanted, I loved movies since I was a kid. So I went to school for it, and just straight up and got my uh, bachelor's degree in film. And then just kind of went from there. There was kind of a time period where I was like, no, I don't know if I'm gonna make movies anymore. I, I got the degree and it was kind of like a, a, a few, like a year and a half where I didn't make any movies, I didn't make any work. And then I was like, no, I really want to do this. And so I just charged ahead and just started making my own stuff. Curtis is about a young man who um, is on a, a lot of psychedelic drugs and at a party. And after a conversation with uh, one of his fellow partygoers, he believes that perhaps his life is not his own and that perhaps his cat might be able to see the, the you know, impending doom or the, the future that is in store for him. And he becomes quite paranoid as drug addicts tend to become. And. Uh, it, hilarity ensues. I don't want to give too much away. We shot Curtis in Austin, Texas. I had lived there briefly a long time ago, and ever since then I've been going back for South by Southwest. A really good friend of mine, Frank Mosley, who's worked with me on a lot of projects, he moved there. And a few other people that I knew were already there, so it kind of just seemed like the logical choice, like, okay, well, let's go make a movie in Austin, because most of the people I wanted to work with on this particular project were there. So we only had to bring a few people in from out of town. So we got an Airbnb for the house, the, the set, and we just kind of hunkered down, and for a week, we just made this movie together. Austin is just a very welcoming city, very welcoming film scenes, very easy to, to make movies there. It was a it was a no-brainer. The production period of Curtis was two weeks, actually. I went down a week right after Christmas for a week and did a lot of pre-production in town because I don't live in Austin. And then we had a full week to kind of shoot the film, but we only shot it in three days. We had four days to shoot it. We had an extra day just to, to make sure we got everything we needed. Because we're dealing with a cat, because we're dealing, you know, it's, I mean, we're dealing with one location essentially, and kind of just one character and a cat. So we knew that that wasn't going to be the issue. The issue was gonna be dealing with a, a cat. And the search for the cat led right up to the day of shooting. And we found a cat named Crash. And Crash has a has a, a problem where Crash walks and falls over. Crash will never die from it. It's not, it, it doesn't hurt him. Because of that, it was a lot easier to <laughs> essentially put Crash wherever he wanted to because cr Crash doesn't move very easily. It doesn't move a lot. So it was very easy to pick up Crash, set Crash down and, and do that kind of thing. We wanted to make sure we had plenty of time to get it. We got everything we needed and more. And there was a lot of times where we're like, if, he, if Crash just sits there and looks at the camera, gold, we got it. Like that's all I need, I just need a reaction shot. There's a shot on the can where the, where the cat, in the script the cat was supposed to turn and, and wink. And we're like, that'll never happen. That'll never happen. Within two and a half minutes of filming Crash on a, a green screen, he blinked or he winked at us. It was, we, well, we lost it, it was really cool. Everyone was just like, no way that just happened. Because of Crash's um, disability, I guess, in some ways, and and just that he kind of nailed it every time, we, we just flew to the schedule. So for, the, for Curtis, um, we did a crowdfunding project, and in hindsight, we did it right after another one that I was a part of, another crowdfunding project, and I worked really hard on that one, and kind of a lot of the people that gave to that one were kind of tapped out, so they didn't give so much to the one we had for, for Curtis. So in hindsight, I should have separated them or kind of worked that differently. I also did it around Christmas, which is a very difficult time to do a crowdfunding. Um, I think it's good. I think crowdfunding, I'm starting to realize it's not really good, in my opinion, for funding one entire film like all the way through I think it's really good to use it to start crowdfund your development and then develop the, the thing and then crowdfund the pre-production or crowdfund pre-production production and then show them what you did and then crowdfund the, the production end of things so that you're kind of gaining followers throughout the stage because it takes a good two three years to make a film if you know if you're coming back every year with stuff like here here's the stuff that you helped create now we need more money to and then you gain an audience as an artist, which is good. An artist needs more, you know, a, a solid core audience. And then, you know, people are kind of engaged. I think just when you just go on real quick and ask for a big money dump for your short film, I think it, it often fails. I love being a part of independent film. I think the community is, is, is amazing. It's a strong community and it's changing all the time. The only thing that I sometimes have an issue with with independent film is that it's very, by its nature, kind of navel gazing type of incestuous kind of like, Sometimes what what is cool in indie film, like pe normal people don't care about. Often you have these amazing indie films that are just for everyone. And 
they're just great. But then there is a certain group and a certain audience that just want indie film to just continue to be what indie film is and not break out of that. It's boring. That, I find that aspect boring because I don't find it's challenging to anyone. I think it's just, it's just, it's allowing people to just make movies for other filmmakers and I don't think that that's interesting. I think it's interesting to try to make movies for 10 year olds and 80 year olds and everyone in between. I want my grandmother to like it and I want my art professor to like it. I want, you know, the film critic to like it and I want 17 year old to, to want to go see it and stuff like that. And there are amazing examples of that, but there are also amazing examples of film that is too cool for itself, and just only for certain people. And I think that that's just really pretentious and boring. I'm kind of taking a shift in stuff that I've done before, and it's good to grow and, and change and move. I, I, I made a lot of films, I think, in the past that were very serious and sometimes, I think, tackled with uh, subjects that I didn't particularly have a good handle on, or maybe I just, were, you know, I wasn't so close to who I was. This new trilogy of short films, uh, there was one right before this, now this is the middle one and there's one coming, are kind of like a, I'm, I'm just kind of like um, saying, I'm just gonna be myself and, and make some short films that kind of, that I would wanna see, that I would wanna do and not be so indie about it, I guess. <laughs> and hoping to, to lead to the next feature, which is in the process of being made, but I'm, I'm kind of taking my time a little bit more. I used to make a film every year, and in some ways I still am, but I'm, I'm, I'm interested in taking more of my time with trying to discover a better way of doing things. It's like this was the first film where I was able to just direct actors, which was fantastic. So that's a new feeling and a new way of doing things. So processing that and taking that to the next one is, is incredibly important to me at this point. So it's not the kind of thing it used to be about practice makes perfect type of thing. And it does, but I think that you need to practice, reflect, practice and reflect and, and, and keep working to make it better because ultimately the last film I make is hopefully the best film I make a while to go. So it's a good process uh, to the next feature. We'll see what that becomes.